everybody and welcome to episode one of series two of Doctor Who the Community Show. You look fantastic. I'm here. I'm crying. Well, it's been over a month since I last saw your Community Show fan faces, so... Let's catch up. Christmas has been and gone, so expect a few Christmassy projects and things pop up. Consider them presents from Nick Frost Santa. And my birthday also happened in December. Happy birthday to me. Got a couple new cosplay things being delivered. They're taking a while, but you know what? That's fine. <laughs> I just want that new coat so bad. But that's in the past. Let's focus on the future as I tell you some of the exciting things you've got in store. First off, the interview guest is none other than George Sheard. He was kind enough to come by the flat and let me interview him here. That's a first. I'm saying this as if it's already happened, but I haven't done it yet. Filming's fun, but expect some insightful questions as well as a fun little game. Aside from the beautiful George, you will also be hearing from Jude Lavis. He is a fantastic, multi-talented bloke that really I should interview. But he's on the show today as my first ever guest host. Really, he could have hosted any section because he is a cosplayer. He is an artist. He is quite the memester. The rumba has activated itself. And that scared the life out of me. Excuse me, dear boy, I must go turn off K9. We named it K9 in his Alexa, it's quite fun. Sorry about that, but yes, Jude will be hosting the art section today and I am very, very excited to see what he comes out with. And who knows, maybe you watching at home might be the next guest host. There's no barrier of entry. And finally, before we get this show on the road, it's competition time. <laughs> Just like I said in the update video, we have got challenges this time. Here's your first one. Your task, if you choose to accept it, involves recreating a scene from Doctor Who. It can be any scene. You want to do Absorbaloff? You do your Absorbaloff. You want to do Jodie Whittaker? I could have phrased that better. But getting back on track, you pick a Doctor Who scene and you recreate it shot for shot as best you can. You can do this live action. You can do this with figures. You could do this in a video game like Minecraft or Gmod. I shall be marking your submissions out of 10 based on two main criteria. Criteria number one, creativity. Have you made your own costumes? Have you designed the sets and focused on the small details? Have you nailed the voices? Or have you just used the voice clips? And criteria number two, accuracy. How close have you got the cinematography? Have you got the inflections down? And the top two or three, depending on the amount of submissions, will be featured in episode two of the Community Show in February. How do you get them to me? Well, you could upload them to Google Drive. You can upload them to YouTube. As long as I have the link to it, you're in. And if this competition goes well, it means I can do more in the future with bigger and better prizes. This could be gift card codes or physical prizes like Doctor Who merch. You never know. If you have any questions about this challenge, leave it in the comments and I'll get straight back to you. But for now, it's time to probably start episode one of Doctor Who The Community Show Series 2. Oh, it's a big day to be a first Doctor fan, isn't it? If you're a Josh Snares, a Siobhan of the Flashing Blade podcast, me. Hartnell's cool. <laughs> Welcome to the first fan film segment of 2022. I've got three projects that I'm very excited to share with you. Firstly is a trailer for Dimension of the Daleks. I showed off a teaser for it last year, but now we have a full trailer. Are you referring to me? No, not you. Surely this dimension belongs to me, the Dalek Supreme? No, not you either. Guys, guys, he's clearly talking about me, the true Dalek Supreme of the Paradigm. Uh, right, if you don't know it's you, it's probably not going to be you, is it? You suck! <sighs> Sorry about that. Right, Dimensions of the Daleks trailer. I have one critique. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. The CG Daleks are on point. The acting is also on point. I am always a big fan of Dan Patton's Doctor. But very simply, my critique... <sighs> How do I say this without being mean? is that you don't have a release date. You can't just get me excited to watch something and then just say, oh, by the way, it's out this year. How 
dare you? But in all seriousness, I am excited to see this fan film. I'm sure a lot of you are too, and the views on this trailer alone show that there is a lot of hype to this. Not the views are everything. And yeah, check out the trailer if you haven't. Go and subscribe to his channel so you don't miss it coming out. Here's a segment of the trailer. All hail the so, the music in the trailer is actually copyrighted, and uh, to get my monetization, I've got to just mute it. Run. Although the words still pop up. I only hope that my failure. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? Leads to your victory. Look at these pretty visuals. Oh, I could kiss them. Kiss that damn pattern. Oh, beautiful. The next creator I'm going to be featuring here is also one I mentioned last year. I do intend on having more different creators this year, but. That's not to leave the others in the dust. This is Nicky Boy Crow. He released a Christmas fan film titled The Autons of Christmas. I mentioned his Halloween one last year, also out of date. Look, it's the timing-wise of the show. It doesn't match up. Expect a few Christmassy bits to sneak through this episode. But I love these fan films, and I'll tell you why. It's exactly the kind of fan films I have made in the past. I relate so hard to this fan film. I don't know about you, but... I've tried to make fan films in the past and it's just a lack of people, you know, you don't have the actors to pull off what you're trying to do, so you just play everyone. I love that, I absolutely adore that about this stuff. And Nicky Boy Crow, it must be said, your Doctor cosplays so far are on point both for the Halloween one and this, so you're doing well my boy. Highly recommend checking this out, I see this creator going far. At least I'm here, which is a good thing. Oh, I'm into the woods. Ah, hello Doctor, nice to see you. I know it's not much, a unit has gone down a bit, you know, with the budget and stuff, but we're still saving the world as usual. I have magic powers, I see the future, and the future holds! One more person being shouted out in the fan film segment. How could I have known? I am psychic. Finally, in the fan film segment, there is Time Lord Productions with the Dalek Stratagem. Yes, the Daleks are reigning supreme. All hail the Daleks. All hail the Daleks! Shut up! This is episode two of series one of their fan films, and it definitely shows a lot of promise. And you know what? I think it's appropriate to read the synopsis. The stakes are high for the 14th Doctor when he comes face to face with a Dalek fresh out of the Time War. With plans to turn Earth into a mass production for weaponry and a Cyberman attacked by the Dalek who sets out for revenge. Reading that synopsis reminded me they indeed have an excellent Cyberman cosplay, a Mondasian Cyberman. As someone who is currently trying to make his own Cyberman costume, I must say it's aspirational to see. Damage levels insufficient. Exterminate! Come on! So go and subscribe to this creator and check out his fan films. It's another one to keep an eye on. That is all from the fan film segment this time. Let's move on to the audios. <laughs> Like I've said in the past, fan films can be very tricky. You need the costumes, you need the people, you need the time. Hence why audios are usually a lot more popular with online creators. And let me tell you, we have some amazing online audio creators. I promoted and even interviewed many amazing audio creators last year, and hopefully I will be continuing this year. So let's start off. The first I will be mentioning is a personal favourite of mine, Spectral Horizons. Bless you! They have done some amazing stuff in the past, and December of last year was no different. They set out to tackle an anthology series, the Winter Solstice Anthology Series. The link to the full Winter Solstice Anthology Series will be linked in the description below, as well as everything I'll be mentioning today in order. In particular, I want to mention that being the little town and the giant goat. This is set during Eleven's time on Trenzalore. Cyberman attack! A Cyberman. Let those Cybermen give me a rest. Hey, no, uh, Doctor. Sit. Sit, Doctor. If you go out there again, you're going to break a hip or something. Don't you worry about my well-being, Barnabal. The last person who did that disappeared with my mode of transport. So not the best role model. I'm telling you, Doctor, you're not 
fit! Hey, I'm as fit as ever. Look at these muscles. I'm now going to lie down. I don't think I can move it. Oh, sleepy time for Doctor. Now I have to fight a Cyberman, damn it! This is a toilet. Which is a fantastic point in time. I remember DW to DWFA, I believe his name was, uh, made an amazing figure adventures about that, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Now, if you have listened to it, you know damn well why I'm mentioning it, because I'm in it! I play Matt Smith's 11th Doctor, along with an amazing cast, uh, playing characters such as Barnable. Such as Barnable. That's offensive. I'm aware of the vanity of promoting this one in particular, but had to, don't get me wrong. The whole playlist is absolutely incredible, showing off some amazing talent from script writing to acting. But I hone in on that one in particular because that's the one I got to see the most from start to end, so I'm a bit more attached to it. And from the voice acting side of things, I loved the script when I first read it. I loved the cast when I heard it all together. I loved always chatting to Taya. But yes, please go and check this one out as well as the entire Winter Solstice Anthology series. They put a lot of effort into this to get it out for December and it shows. Anyways, how have you been, Barnable? I hope your day didn't involve any boredom or danger. There's a tiny little gap in between those two and hopefully you found a lane there. I did, luckily enough. I was making something today. Something for you. Oh, for me. Oh, go on then, Barnable. Speaking of putting a lot of effort into something, Russell on Productions has been, uh, has been hard at work. Chances are you know Russell on Productions, aka Rory, for one of two things. You will either know him as the creator for the Dark Days audio series, or you'll know him as one of three guests I had at my MCM Comic Con panel last year. Yes, I'm still bragging about that. This particular huge project is called Endgame of the Doctor. When he first told me about this project, I thought he was kidding because I was like, there's no way you could do something this big. That, that involves too many people. But then slowly over time on Twitter, I saw certain names being confirmed for this project, including my own, but we're not going to focus on that. You will no doubt recognize a lot of these names in it. For example, Dom and Meg from DW2012, George Guidera, Connor Chadwick, Alex Baxter Scott, Cliff Chapman. There are so many of these names in it. And it's only part one! As his timeline was being untangled, he remained within the confines of his ship with his head in his hands. He looks towards the ceiling of his ship and begins to ask himself about how much time he has left, and begins to ponder the possible outcomes of what just happened. His attack eyebrows focused on his console as he got up and walked towards them. To the Pyrion invasion. Pyrion invasion? God, I'm good at this pronunciation, aren't I? This is by a new creator I found, Hill Productions. And once again, it's a Christmas special. Yay! <laughs> I'm aware it's not quite the season for a Christmas special, but maybe save this one in a little watch later playlist and save it for December or November of this year, because it's so cool. It's got a great cast, great premise, another fantastic original Doctor. There's countless of those now, good Lord. And why not? Let's read the synopsis together, shall we? The Pyronian Empire has arrived on Earth and is hunting for an escaped prisoner. The freshly regenerated Doctor and his friend and companion, Phoebe, are thrust into a middle ground between the Pyrans and their quarry, determined to stop the situation escalating any further. With the Doctor still feeling the effects of a traumatic regeneration, and with the chances of a peaceful resolution quickly disappearing, anything could happen. If that sounds like something you want to see, go and check it out. Don't be a Scrooge, yeah? It's January. This feels weird saying that now. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, screw the universe. Let's go find our friend. Come on. That... You just said it was impossible. Yes, well, like Alice, I tried to believe six impossible things before breakfast. Hey, can you believe it? It's not butter. I can. That's one of the five impossible things I'm embracing today. Finally... Something else I'm in, lol! <laughs> the Queer Doctors series is something I promoted in one of the first couple episodes of the community show. It's about an original Doctor played by James York, and based on the title, The Queer Doctor, you can guess what his gimmick is. Is gimmick the right word? I don't know. I love this TARDIS team, by the way. James York and Grace Beard are fantastic together, especially in the script reads I was with them for. This two-parter is called The Lone Soldier, and it is a Sontaran story. You know that Sontaran adventure games where it's the Sontarans, but they're back in time with Guy Fawkes and stuff?
stuff. It gives me that vibe, but swap Guy Fawkes for what I play, Bram Stoker. I had to do an Irish accent, so any Irish people watching that, I'm sorry, but blame Chelsea Lagan, because she's the one that sort of coached me on being Irish. So, her fault, if it's bad. Loved playing Bram Stoker in this, absolutely loved the cast, it was a fantastic time. Also, a big shout out to Matthew Chambers, who plays the Sontaran, because even in the script read, he was giving it 100%. So hell yeah! Here's a clip! Any chance of a sequel? <laughs> the uh, undead do not stay dead for long. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Erin, what a nice dress you're wearing. You're Bram Stoker? Yes, that is my name. You look a little pale. <sighs> Have you met my dear friend? <laughs> there ends the first audio production segment of the year. <laughs> Moving on. So what do you think's going on here? This is literally blowing my mind. My mind is exploded. Explody mind. Oh, now I've got a funny story about this one. Matt, as one of the doctors, what's your take on this? What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React and today we have a very special guest. But Nicholas, yeah Ron, with a W. Where is he? Whoa! Whoa. Hello, I'm the doctor. Matthew Smith, Matt Smith, Matthew Smithington. Or just Matt. All the way from England. Or Gallifrey if you're a big old nerd. Well, when you're on this couch, you're automatically a nerd! You can also uh, catch me in Edgar Wright's latest movie, Last Night in Soho. So, plug! <laughs> Today we're going to be looking at some Doctor Who visual effects and getting your take on them. As we have someone from the set here on the couch, hopefully you can give us some insight. I have got some stories to tell. Alright, now let's jump into these effects. Don't interrupt me. Uh, uh, sorry. So in your show, the doctor can change his face through this thing called regeneration. That's right. You know, very simple faith through light transition. Well, this was the 60s. All they really had to work with is lead paint and Hartnell's threats. So why don't we compare this to the most recent regeneration, the 12th Doctors? I let you go. Oh! Oh! That's awesome! So we've gone from an old man just lying on the floor to an old man literally becoming a firework. Katy Perry would be proud! <laughs> <laughs> you wanna know what I wanna see? I wanna see something from your time on the show. Oh, goodness. I hate watching myself. Oh, really? Nah, just kidding, I'm sexy. <laughs> and in that battle, there was a man with more blood on his hands than any other. A man who would commit a crime that would silence the universe. And that man was me. Ah yes, the day of the Doctor. Oh, getting to film that with David and John Hurt, it, it was a dream. Well, maybe you'll be filming something with David on the show again. <gasps> this is actually very impressive CGI for the BBC. They're not exactly known for big bombastic effects. Oh, now I've got a funny story about this one. Really? Uh, no, I was just saying that for your opening montage thing to get people hyped. Get that watch time. So what they did here is they created a visual pass uh, with multiple different hues, then created an optical map and zoomed a digital camera right through it. What? And then to build up the tension, they added these digital explosions, uh, although some could be filmed on a BBC lot uh, with a green screen. I, um... It's all right, I'm just making it up. But I thought you were an expert. It's in the title, Visual Effect Artists. REACT! Oh no, I'm just an AI created by- <laughs> Thanks for watching this latest episode of Visual Effects Artist React. Don't forget to check out the Stuntman React and all the other Reacts. We got lots of Reacts. And if you want full, extended cuts of these episodes, don't forget to head on over to the website. I'm leaving now. No. No, you're not.
Even now, I don't have an intro. I, d <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do the cringy thing of like, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. Hello, everybody, guys. What's up? On. It's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first episode of series two of the community show. Oh, that is the intro. <laughs> yeah, why not? I needed a good interview guest to kick us off. Oh. I couldn't get him. <laughs> George Sheard, yeah. <laughs> so this, this is youth, right? Hi guys, I'm a screaming and buzzing. That's you, yeah. I will be there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still just necking drinks, <laughs> and drum rats, as if it's cracked nothing. Open. Just there we go. I've cracked open a bottle of Diet Coke. What I often do to prepare myself for an interview yeah. is to go on their channel, go on their social media, and oh, go good. oldest to newest. Oh, good. And oh, that good. thumbnail well, um, just through. drew my eye. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. I have about like thirty. There is a lot, but we'll yeah. get we'll get yeah. to that. Oh. Don't worry. But no, it can't okay. all be Doctor Who stuff. No. It can't all be that. You've got such a, a wide history. Because here's the thing, you're yeah. the same as me as we've been doing YouTube for a while mm. and we've tried mm. everything. Yeah. <laughs> and we, like, I've purged a lot of mine. You haven't. I have not. <laughs> So what have you found? We'll oh, start off good. with uh, with one of the Doctor Who things. One of my personal favourite projects you've done okay. was the Genesis of the Cybermen. Oh yeah, yeah. Operation Exodus. They're coming! The Cybermen are coming! When you showed off the trailer initially, I remember retweeting it, I was very impressed, and then randomly you DM'd me the full link to the whole thing, and I was like, <laughs> I was oh, just like, check this out. Yeah, check it out. Where did the idea of doing that came from? It was like a thing where, I think I put on Twitter, I, I, I watched what is now my favourite film, The Lighthouse, which is mm. a sort of black and white, kind of noir-y horror. It's fantastic if you haven't seen it already, it's brilliant. But I saw that and I put something on Twitter going like, oh, it'd be great if Doctor Who Series 13 had like a full black and white, like, kind of aesthetic episode where it sort of changed the format up a little I bit. I bet you got really excited in that moment where you see the house and it goes black yeah, and white. Yeah, I was, and I was thinking, like, oh, oh. I was just waiting for my check in the mail, to be honest, <laughs> but I didn't, didn't come. I liked that idea, and I think a lot of people liked it, and I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'm going to try and edit it, and I'll say, mm. okay, what episode, if like anyone could pick an episode, everyone went for World Nothing Time. I sort of did an edit of that, enjoyed that, and then thought, well, that didn't take too long, maybe I should do like a full film version and like, um, mess about with that, make it, it was, it was great. I, I really enjoyed sort of uh, putting that together and I was I'm genuinely really happy with the, uh, the outcome really, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, that episode does very much lean its way into black and white, just mm. it, the, the way the lighting and the direction is, it yeah, does, definitely. definitely. It's one of the only projects that I look back on and don't despise. So well, there we great. go, that's work to treat. <laughs> now back to the cringe. Uh, when you go... <laughs> oh, we didn't, we didn't stay away for long. No, no. But some other favourites of mine, you, you mm. didn't start with your Doctor Who reviews that you're necessarily known for these days. Mm. You do a lot of uh, from fan, some fantastic Let's Plays. Uh, mm. <laughs> I'm not going to make you watch them, here's a clip. So today, we're going to do a single play and I've already made a uh, survival world just so I don't have to watch the loading screen. So we're just going to load it up, I'll play this world, so there's hopefully going to be no lag. Look how smooth this is. Lovely, <laughs> lovely, thank you. I don't even know what that's going to be, but I'm excited. You can see the slow sort of transition into your Doctor Who stuff, because yeah. you start with the Minecraft, <laughs> then you go to the FNAF. A lot of and people then... aren't aware of that. That's really interesting, because I've got done like live streams and people have said like, oh, they're talking about the new Final Fantasy Freddy's game. Totally unaware of the fact that my channel was that for about three years. <laughs> and then you can slowly see as you go yeah. into Gmod, like, you, <laughs> the occasional like Doctor Who thing will pop up, then you, you get your face more involved. And you can see, sometimes in other people's channels, you can see it's quite clearly, okay, we've stopped that now, Moving on to the next thing, but you, you it's like slowly working your way through yeah. to what you're doing now. Yeah. It's very peculiar. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you I would. It. Going back to something you may be more proud of, okay. uh, I was surprised to find that your charity stuff started oh, yeah. quite a while back. You started in about 2016 doing charity yeah, live streams. Yeah, I know. That was interesting. I think, like, I mean, I don't know if you're aware of the, the Yogg's cast, mm. sort of like a channel. Love sort of the group cast. I loved them when I was younger. And they well, were the Minecraft my... does show it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of my main inspirations. YouTube, which is why I did so much Minecraft. One thing I really loved of theirs, they did this sort of like charity thing every December. Oh, the still, Jingle Jam. The Jingle Jam, and they mm. still do it where it's like a different, like a, like a five to eight hour live stream every day of like December, which is, is mad and it's incredible. And I thought, well, I kind of like to do, try something for charity. And I did like a little 10 hour stream like back in the day and it went really well. My school were really supportive of it at the time. I was oh, dead nice. young, so whatever. But yeah, I just kind of enjoyed doing that. And then I always sort of thought when, when I come to uni, 
probably not in first year because I've just moved in, but I think in second year I really want to try and focus on doing like the best version of that that I can, like mm. set up a prop, like set up a whole living room that do it properly, and that's that sort of last one there. I'm not sure. I probably will do another one at some point, but I want to make sure that it can be better. I yeah. don't want to like step down at, at all. I think that was. I'm so proud of that last one, and like the again, as you said, the transition of like the early streams into the the later ones. Yeah. Do you know how much you've raised overall? Oh God. Um, I don't know, but I don't want to overguess. Just in case. <laughs> Five million pounds. <laughs> like six thousand ish, I think. Vaguely, That's damn good vaguely, though. Vaguely, I, I mean, it might be more, might be less. I could be tremendously less. I really can't remember. But there's about four charity streams I think we did. I love seeing the charity stuff because Mr. Tardis did one just yeah, at the end of last year. Yeah, that was fantastic as well, yeah. I yeah. absolutely love that. So you are known for quite a lot of things now, not mm. just sort of in the past. You've got your Spill Your Beans podcast, yeah, yeah. you've got your live streams you do, me and Gemma like uh, tuning in. Yeah, I see, I see your name <laughs> pop up every now and then. Yeah, yeah, same with, what is it, Jude? Jude pops up. Yeah. Yeah, I love yes. Jude, he's hilarious. Yeah. You've even cameoed in EastEnders, which was, a, which was <laughs> the was, funniest I thing. I can't believe it's been brought up, but that's, yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah the boogie in the back. Time. Having a great time. Oh, it's brilliant. Oh. And I love seeing people bleed into the mainstream media. Yeah. Because obviously you work predominantly in sort of, you're, you're freelance, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I, I, I do freelance, yeah, but like my sort of, I'm sort of working out, because obviously I'm still in uni now, so then after uni I'm going to try and sort of bleed myself more into the mainstream media, yeah. if that's, uh, <laughs> to use your words, yeah. I mean, you've even done short audio stories. Yes. That was something I didn't know about until I looked at Yeah, no, it. they were fun. That's just sort of like where my sort of passions lie with, uh, I love like script writing and like I kind of want to do that more when I'm older. So that was just sort of a start of that. I've always, you know, I've always wanted to do like an audio thing or now I kind of can, I'll just do like a short one. And then I think when those lockdown stories came out, the ones on the BBC website, I was like, oh, it'd be great if like I could find actors to like do that yeah. and like bring that to life a little bit in just some sort of way just adapt it David Tennant will be in the next one I hear ah uh, yeah yeah there we go he's everywhere apparently <laughs> he's the 14th Doctor he's the next Doctor next show he's runner. leading the Century Special Century Special Century Special what's the word Set Centenary Special that's the one <laughs> I, I talk good yes like I said Spill Your Beans live streams yeah. EastEnders short series the, the question is the burning question that everybody needs to know is what's next? Ooh, oh what's God. on the horizon for the Ace Creeper YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know, actually. That's a really disappointing answer, but at the moment, I'm trying to develop some projects, a couple of short film things that I'm developing at the moment, one with uni, one sort of separately from that. So I'm hoping to get those kind of out there in the next year or so, hopefully online. Beyond that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be trying to work and then on, in my free time, do some script writing, do some sort of development, probably do some more freelance stuff. When I think of something Doctor Who related, I'll probably throw something out there. I mean, there's plenty more episodes to come, isn't there, with this new era, so mm. whenever the new Doctor gets announced, that's gonna be a big... Oh yeah, thing. and I can't wait yeah. to see the thumbnail where the George Sheard pose, which I will call it. Uh, do you wanna know what it is? <laughs> Go on. The George Sheard pose, so I've got this here. You get a sonic screwdriver, <laughs> right? You, you look to the camera, sort of on the side, and you go... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's in every Flux review, and it absolutely um, cracks me up oh, every time. I don't know what to do. I'm just so like, oh, I've got to have a photo for the thumbnail. I don't know what to do. I always used to do that. I was like, oh, one man setup over here. I haven't really got a fancy little button to like click my camera, so I've got to like press my space key. So I've got to kind of like stretch, <laughs> stretch one hand underneath there, so it doesn't look like I'm leaning, and then do it. Oh, horrible. Look, it's not fun for me unless I get to make fun of whoever I'm interviewing. But yes, that is the end of my questions. It's Good it's stuff. sad. It's sad to see. This might be one of the shorter interviews, and I should have planned more. <laughs> <laughs> if you want more George Sheard action, tune in soon as we go head to head in Trivial Pursuit Doctor Who edition. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs>Here it is, the wonderful art section of the community show. Uh, Jack has kindly asked me to present this section, and of course, that's what I'm doing. Uh, ignore what you saw at the start, none of your business. As always, there is some brilliant art to look over, so without further ado, let's get on with it. We have Doctor Who and the Great Destroyer Part 3, uh, the story and artwork by Flat Cap Whovian, and the editing by Matrix Boy 29 I've had a look at this comic, it's brilliant, I love the story, 
but what I love the most is the art style. I love the sort of cartoony um, genre to it. I think it really fits. Um, we've got the master in there. We've got the brigadier as well. Um, we've got the the third doctor. Like, what what more could you want from a Doctor Who comic? Let's be honest. Let's be let's be completely honest. Absolutely forgot to mention Omega on the cover. If it couldn't get any better, Omega. I am Omega. I'm an absolute sucker for Tardises. Okay, as you can see up there, got quite a few of them. I love them. I love renders, I love drawings, I love models, I love all that sort of stuff. So when the glowing one puts forward this snowy TARDIS design, very Christmas theme, we've got a Christmas tree in the background, we've got the, the beautiful uh, Tennant Eccleston TARDIS with snow and the wreath, I thought, brilliant. A brilliant render, it looks so realistic. I'm eternally jealous of people's abilities to make renders like this because I love a good TARDIS render. I love a snowy TARDIS. I love a Christmassy TARDIS. Don't we all? Don't we all have a little festive TARDIS? And from Delias, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Dale Andrew Smith, we have another beautiful render, okay? And this is one of my favourites because it's the TV movie exterior, the beautifully designed box by Richard Hoodlin from the TV movie 1996. We all know it, we all love it. It's a brilliant TARDIS and an even better render. It looks so realistic. It's sort of um, sat in this, I mean, you can see the picture. You can see the picture on the screen. It's sat in this sort of warehouse thing. It looks, it, it doesn't look like a render. It looks like a real picture. If anything, it's making me excited for a possible McGann series that we'll never get. Uh, so it's kind of bittersweet in a way, but once again, a brilliant bit of artwork. Staying on the TARDIS theme even further, we've got an interior this time. Not an exterior, we've got an interior, and it's one of my personal favourites. It's the first Doctor's TARDIS interior, and the attention to detail on this one from Sebastian Rautenberg is perfect. You've got the lovely greenish coloured console, you've got the blue flooring, you've got the scanner, you've got the, the time rotor that looks perfect, this little colander thing inside. The whole thing is lit beautifully, it's rendered beautifully, it's a work of art, and I absolutely love it. Moving off the topic of TARDISes, we've got some Daleks, the mortal enemy of the Doctor. I'm a massive Dalek fan. Ignore that Cyberman behind me. He means nothing. I love a Dalek. And from Jackson Temporalson, we've got some beautiful Dalek customs, some beautiful Dalek pictures, some beautiful Dalek posing. I am jealous. I love a, I love a good Dalek photograph. I love a good Dalek pose. I love a good Dalek scene. And... Jackson has absolutely smashed it out of the park once again, like he always does. Let's be honest, he always smashes it out of the park. Some brilliant Dalek photography, some brilliant Dalek customs. As you can see on screen, you can see them with your own eyes. And another fan comic. Last, but definitely not least, we have this absolutely brilliant First Doctor fan comic from the undocumented one. It's always good to see some love for the First Doctor. I don't think he gets enough love. And this fan comic is a perfect representation of the love I think the First Doctor deserves. We have the Undocumented Ones comic. It's brilliant. The drawing is brilliant. I love the art style, sort of muted colours and tones that just sort of perfectly fits the First Doctor's era. We've got a bit of political satire in there as well. I love that too. Absolutely brilliant bits of artwork. It's been a joy to be on the community show. Thank you for having me, Jack. Obviously, enjoy the rest of the episode. If you want to find me, my links are probably in the description. If not, I'm at underscore pig and tea break on uh, Twitter. And then from there, that's where you'll find all of my links. Uh, thank you for having me, and I hope you enjoyed the segment and all of the wonderful artwork. <laughs> what were they thinking? I have been a lover of cosplay from a very early age. Stop it. And clearly I'm not alone. Here are three cosplayers I've had saved away for episode one to show off. Firstly, there is Gothic Princess 98. And it's a cosplay you don't often get to see. Gwen Cooper from Torchwood. You might recognise those steps she's standing on as that is where we did a Comic-Con cosplay meetup. And you can even see me in one of the pictures. Look, there I am. There I am. You could tell I, would, I wasn't ready for it. There was a lot of cameras. I never saw a lot of those pictures and, and I came out not good in every one of them. So that's gone well. But either way, Gothic Princess, you're rocking the Torchwood get up. I don't think I actually got to speak to you or, or see much of you at that meetup. I was a little bit too awkward to really socialise too much, but you look great. Next is Owen Luckhurst, also known as Dr. Disco. Did some of this say Disco? I've got the chocolates. Yeah, I know Owen because he works at the Who shop and when I went to visit with Katie Haynes, he was the one behind the counter. And wouldn't you know it, he's also a fantastic cosplayer who goes to things such as the BFI events. He also went to a convention where he met Joe Martin and Sasha Dewan. 
How very, very dare you? See, this is why I need to do more Doctor Who based conventions. I haven't done one since like Doctor Who Festival back in the Capaldi era days. Phantom Films, Capital Five, looking at you. But anyway, Owen, he cosplays the 13th Doctor and looks damn fine doing it. I do love a good gender bend when you take a uh, normally male or female character and you swap it around or you just dress up as it for fun anyway. Because who cares? clothes, isn't it? Looking good, Owen! And moving on to the third and final cosplayer of this section of episode one of series two. Jean-Luc! Also known as the other Harry on Instagram. Looking good as ten! Hi, Ash! I also do love the caption, tired docky who? Sick. That's a big mood right there. I mean, what else is there to say? It's a tenth doctor cosplay? In the woods, you got the hair spot on, you got the fantastic suit, we are, I'm assuming Magnolia Clothes. All I have to say, once again, hi Ash! You gotta love a bit of Ted in cosplay. <laughs> Not wearing the right clothes for this. Oh, but that is it for the cosplay section. Hope you all enjoyed. Moving on to the next section. I thought it was about to fall on my head. I saw my life flash before my eyes. <laughs> Here we are, at the very end of the first episode of the Community Show Series 2. Ah, oh, it's been fun. <laughs> but before I say goodbye, there are a few more promotions I wanted to show you all. Firstly, there is Doctor Who Poop Shorts, which just don't miss! I have been replaying this goddamn song in my head ever since I first heard it. That being... How do you even come up with that? How do you watch that little video that the Doctor Who official YouTube channel comes out with and goes, oh yeah, I know what to do with this. My god, Jerry, George, the two folks behind Doctor Who Poop. Oh, and Shay. Geniuses, the lot of you. I love you. Next is a project I've promoted in the past and even had the creator on for an interview. That's right. It's Clayton, that beautiful Australian boy. He is still making that amazing fan game, Forgotten Time, and he has even started a TikTok. The TikTok's name is Mr. Treeman FT, and yeah, do it, or else. Don't you want to see the adventure games come back, you know? Or really, like, Doctor Who has some amazing games, don't they? I have recently been playing the VR game. I got the VR and the games for my birthday. Wicked, thank you, Gemma. The Edge of Time is so good. I mean, I get motion sick, but it's so good. But also, if you go further back, there's the adventure games. There's also those Flash games that were on the official Doctor Who website. I miss that, like, Dalek one. We oh my god, it's so good. Anyway. Next is a brand new channel, but from a very familiar face. Doctor Who Adventures. They have decided to branch out to a secondary channel called Doctor Who Adventures Plus. Clearly taking notes from Disney. <laughs> one thing I appreciate about Doctor Who Adventures is I don't want it to come across as an insult, but they're quite sort of child-friendly. It's great to see that for younger fans, they have a channel like Doctor Who Adventures or Doctor Who Adventures Plus to enjoy. I hope that came out right, because I love the Doctor Who Adventures team. I hope to get you on the show in the future, it, this year, hopefully. Next is an excerpt from a podcast, an awful lot of running podcast that was uploaded to Davis's channel. It's talking all about Doctor Who what-ifs, and if you know me, I like that concept. <laughs> it's a good 30, 35 minutes of them just nattering on about it, but they're both so genuinely entertaining to listen to that it flies by. Go and give it a listen and also go and check out an awful lot of running podcast. It's a great podcast. Can I say podcast more? Podcast, podcast, po 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 Last but not least, I wasn't actually sure where to put this. It's the 42nd Doctor. Yes, the 42nd Doctor. It is from the Something Blue Doctor Who YouTube channel, and the 42nd Doctor is played by Ryan Molyneux. And his current project seems to be doing famous Doctor Who speeches in his own Doctor's way. Kind of similar to that Doctor Redivius, who does the first Doctor, but with all the Doctor speeches. And you know what? He does a bang up job, and I've been really enjoying his interpretation on these speeches. Funny story, many, many years ago when Rings of Akaten came out, I tried my hand at recreating it shot for shot, that um, ending speech, because it slaps. I don't know if it's better than the Pandorica open speech, but it's damn close. Matt Smith and Stephen Moffat. It's a killer combination. But that was then and this is now, so expect in the next few days my attempt at a shot for shot recreation of the Rings of Akaten speech. I may be monetized now, but that one for that song 
it's not going to be monetized, is it? <laughs> but yes, that ends the first episode of the year. The first episode of the Community Show Series 2. It feels great to be doing this again. I love promoting the community. It fills my veins with dopamine. A big thank you to George Sheard for coming to my humble abode for an interview. It was awesome having you over. Probably. I'm filming this bit in advance. I haven't seen you yet. <laughs> but yes, thank you, George, and thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in episode two at the end of February. Bye-bye! <laughs>